and as always, I am Sean, this is In The Mixer, episode 21 in our first, first season in the Vanarama South. No, we're in the Vanarama North. Wait, which one is it? We should jump into the game and have a look. So we have been correctly moved into the Vanarama North, which lines up with where we actually sit in the Northern Leagues, and I'm hopeful, now that we're past that, there's no really regional divisions left, uh, it's just Vanarama North, Vanarama National, and then up into league football, which is all across the nation of England. That we won't have any other massive concerns relating to being in the wrong division or anything like that. Regardless, we are carrying on from back to back to back to back promotions. We're going to try and make it five in a row. I've never done that before. If you watched our series last year with Hashtag United, we did get back to back to back to back promotions. But then once we hit the Van Arm South level, uh, we started to balance out a little bit. We struggled. I think it took us two or maybe three seasons to get forward. But regardless, I think we should have enough about ourselves to be up towards the top end of the table. Maybe not right on top, running away with the league the way we'd have the last few years, but certainly in and around the playoff positions. And there is a whole bunch that we have to run you through. I guess the best place to start will be with the squad itself. We've kept most of the squad that we had last season. They did well. There was no real reason to change anything in particular. But we, of course, needed to strengthen. I think it was last season we had 18 players. We're now up to 20. So there are still a couple of positions where we don't have two players for each position. But we've got very good depth, and 20 is a good number because we only have five subs on the bench in this division league. And I think that's the same for Vianna Armour National as well. It's only once we get back up to League 2 that we have seven on the bench again. So 20 is a good, manageable number. And I guess the positive that you guys can notice here is that there's only one player still on a non-contract. So everybody else has managed to sign onto part-time deals, which is fantastic for us. It means we've locked down most of this squad for the whole season. It means if we do sell anybody, we get a transfer fee for them, albeit like a relatively small one. You can see from the values here, there's only Dong Dehe, who looks like he's got a decent value about him. Everybody else uh, is pretty much below 20K, and you wouldn't expect to get much more than them even at this level. The only one that's holding out, Will Dennis, we actually might see if we can even often hear him a contract. No, he's not keen. I just want to get him down to about £200 a week. Uh, I tend to limit myself to certain amounts, like our star players that we've brought in, £300 a week. Uh, Shaden Morris is on loan, so we're not choosing his wage, but it's 275 Everybody else will try and get around 200 uh, and then like squad players and stuff, get them around £100 a week, just so that you're not splashing the cash going out on too many big name players. Uh, you're trying to get a balanced squad and get good depth across the team. And I think we have. I think we've done an all right job. Might as well stop, start at the top. I'll go through all of them. Why not? Will Dennis, of course, played with us towards the end of last season. Uh, three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. Ex Bournemouth Junior uh, also played lower league football with Accrington. Uh, just fantastic goalkeeping contributes here for someone who's still under 23 years of age. Probably hitting his ceiling in terms of potential, um, but he was fantastic for us towards the end of last season. In 10 appearances, including two off the bench, he's got eight clean sheets, which is a fantastic return for the preseason competition. We do want to try and lock him down, uh, get him on a uh, part-time contract. One, so he's training a lot more, uh, and then two, so that we can get a transfer fee for him if anyone does come in. Uh, Abdi Sharif has been with us now for three seasons, I think it is, and he is now playing as our right wing back. He's our backup option. Um, we'll go through Joel Connolly's stuff in a second. Two-star current ability, three-and-a-half star potential, 22 years of age. Still got a lot of development ahead of him. Matthew Carson we picked up, ex-Burnley Jr. We've given him his little face pack there, and he has played at Burnley for the last five seasons. Never made a first-team appearance, but looks to be a very good central defensive option. Only 20 years of age, so it still has a good ceiling above him as well. He'll probably partner Gene Bellahoon, is how I'm going to pronounce it. Uh, X-Men United, ex-Sheffield United, where he's been for the last five years. Uh, good technical attributes in what we need him to do. Uh, okay, mental attributes and good physical attributes as well. 183 centimeters, 71 kilos, four-star current ability, four-star potential. A great player and one that we're very lucky to have. We've got Jamie Melbourne will play. He played most of the last season at left back. He's going to continue. He was very, very good for us. Uh, not the best in terms of what he does with the ball, but we've dropped back down to fullbacks on support, so we don't really need him to do a tremendous amount. Uh, he's got excellent physical attributes. He's got good mental attributes for what we need him to be. Still only 20 years of age, three-star current ability, four-star potential for the X stoke Jr., uh, ahead of them, Reese York is actually back playing in midfield a little bit. He'll play as a deep line playmaker. Three-star current ability, four-star potential, ex-Sheffield United and Grimsby. Uh, also had a little brief stint at Fulham, it looks like, as a junior. Uh, we're going to play him as a deep line playmaker on defend. He's got good defensive attributes, good tackling attributes, and I just want him to give the ball to the guy that he's going to play alongside. Max Hagarth, who has rejoined the club. He was with us last season on loan from Darlington. Uh, well, actually, let's start that again. He was at Man United. He got released. He came to us for one season. Uh, the 2021 season was excellent in that period. 
Darlington picked him up in the higher division. We've now leapfrogged them. So once his contract ended, we were able to pick him straight back up. Thrilled to have him. Still only 21 years of age. Two and a half star current ability. Five star potential. A wonderful Mazzai, which is where we're going to play him as. We might potentially also use him as a central midfielder on attack because people have been saying really good things on Twitter and in the community about that particular role and description. And I'd like to test it out a little bit. So uh, we might try and do that at various points throughout the season as well. Just a fantastic player. I like him a lot, and he's favoured by our fans as well. Uh, Shaden Morris, I did mention him a moment ago. We brought him in on loan from Fleetwood. Again, we've given him the face back treatment. I've made that one ourselves. Uh, two and a half star current ability, five star potential. Still 21 years of age. We're only paying 275 a week. Really good agility, really good natural fitness, pace, whatever else, and good technical ability for crossing and things like that. He'll hopefully carry on where Simeon Ure left off, who is still a free agent but doesn't want to seem to come to us. So we'll give that another month. We might go in for him again. Uh, Nigel Harris will play on the left wing. We've really struggled with this left wing position over the last, really since the series started, nailing down someone that's like a star in that role. Um, so Nigel Harris, only one and a half star current ability, three star potential. That's what it said last season. And he had an excellent year. Still only 20 years of age, naturally left footed, which I always like a lot from my wingers. Good determination, uh, good physical attributes, good technical attributes. So he'll continue. We'll see how he goes. And we're going to keep an eye on the transfer market to bring in another left winger. Uh, Austin Samuel is probably the biggest signing that we've made so far this season. Four-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential. Ex-Wolves Jr. released from them after five years at the club. Uh, excellent technical attributes for an advanced forward. Good physical attributes as well. 16 acceleration, 16 natural fitness, and 14 pace. Great determination at 16. Good work rate. He's off the ball, does need a little bit of improvement, um, but he's going to be excellent for us, and we'll use him in his preferred role. We've also got, alongside him, Jack Stainrod, who was fantastic for us last year. Uh, 19 goals in 28 appearances. Most of those were off the bench. Um, so still three and a half star current, current ability, five star potential. 21 years of age for the expert Sheffield United Junior. We'll play him alongside, probably on the poaching role, uh, just to make use of his good finishing, good dribbling, good first touch. And yeah, hopefully they can develop a bit of a partnership going and uh, get us some goals. Dong Dehee will be the third choice striker. Really unlucky, actually, that Austin Samuels was on the market. You can see here, he's a quality player. Three-star potential. No, said that wrong. Three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential. Still a full Chinese international. I think that does hurt him sometimes. He gets called up at the most awkward times throughout the course of the year. But he'll continue. We've got Marcel Vucevic, who's been around the club now for three seasons. Ex-Burnley youth player. Two-and-a-half-star current ability. Three-star potential for the 22-year-old Polish keeper. He'll definitely be a backup. Uh, ben Wells will be a backup left back. The ex-West Ham, ex-QPR player. Connor Hodgson will be back up central midfielder, two-star and four-star potential. Nathan Clements were picked up ex Bournemouth Jr., previously played at Darlington and Gateshead. Uh, he's just there because of his versatility. He can play on either the wing and up front, so he's a really good sub to have. Um, not the best two-star current ability, two-and-a-half-star potential, but definitely when you've got a sub coming on, you want one that can play multiple positions, which is kind of why Ben Wells is in the squad as well. We've got Jeremy Narkia, or Garkia. I'm just going to say Narkia. Uh, Ex-West Ham Jr. also played at Morpeth and Barnsley in the lower divisions. Looks to be alright, good physical attributes. He's just a straight up right winger. We're going to use him as a backup for Shaden Morris. Uh, ben Hockenhall has joined an ex-Manchester United Jr. Two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential. Left Man United played at Workington for a good few years at the division lower than this one. We're going to bring him up with us. He's on next to no money, so he's a great squad player to have. We've got Yudoka, Yudoka Chima, who has now been at the club for three seasons, ex-Burnley Jr. He's only made 32 appearances, so he's always kind of been a squad player, um, but still very good. Got good technical attributes, good physical attributes as well. We'll keep him around to round out the team. And then Joel Connolly would usually be starting two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential. Like so many of our other players, he's an ex-Burnley junior. He was excellent for us last season. Uh, can now play as a wing back. Uh, we're not going to use him as that. We're going to use him as a fullback on support because he's got a lot of the key attributes for it. Um, but we may potentially look to change him to a wing back on support or even a complete wing back on support if he continues to develop at the same rate. So a very good squad. I'm pretty happy with it. There are still a couple of positions which we spoke about that we are going to try and bring players in. We're keeping an eye on a whole bunch of different wingers just to try and bring in like a, you know, five-star potential type player. But so far, so good. Everything's been going well. Our preseason results have been fantastic. Uh, two draws to start out, but you've got to remember we had a whole bunch of like trials players coming through then. It was a very different lineup that you'll see here to the one that you'll see start today. Uh, then we've pretty much just beaten high division sides from uh, Scotland and Wales throughout the rest of preseason. They've all traveled to us uh, and convincingly 5-0 for the last two games out. Six before that, four before that, five, six, six. Um, so some really good performances and some really good goals. Hopefully we carry that into the start of the season. The fixturing is a little bit weird. We've got Spennymore today and then immediately Nuneaton Borough uh, on Tuesday. 
we're probably just going to do the spending more episode in this or spending more game in this episode uh and then like there's weird shit all over it like we've got stratford here twice in a week it's saying that they're both on the 23rd or the 9th so i don't know if that's a glitch or something or stratford appears further back down here we're just going to see how it goes we're getting through quite a few divisions relatively quickly there's always going to be a couple of glitches that appear here and there but we'll fire through some of these games as quickly as we can and what i'm thinking we're going to do is i did ask for feedback in the last episode i didn't get any if you do have any chuck it in the comment section below we're probably going to try and do 10 episodes for this season uh so like one here one in here we might skip past october do november and then come back for a christmas episode you know like we'll try and bring more of the actual league journey we've also got FA Cup football, FA Trophy football. I'd love to win the FA Trophy. Those couple of cups that we didn't win as we flew out the divisions, they will haunt me. So uh, if we can try and get a trophy at this level, it would be fantastic. As far as the pre-season or the season preview goes, we're looking pretty good. We're currently odds on favourite to win the division 3-2. to two. South Shields, um, a very good team up in Newcastle, I think they are, or up in the northwest somewhere. Uh, the other side that's marked to do well, they've got a relatively squad, strong squad, but they are also looking at trials and things like that as well. I think they used to have Julio Arca. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think they did. Uh, in the Dream 11, we've got Will Dennis in goal, of course, and then Austin Samuels, the new signing up top. So there's some good players in the, in this divisional level, of course. Connor Simpson, ex-Preston, is expected to do well. Look at that, like, look at those technical attributes. He looks phenomenal playing for Chester. Chester expected to do well, and I think they've actually dropped down from, in the most recent years, from the higher division. So they'll have some good players there. There's a few others as well that, you know, you can see have played national level football, Barrow, Hartlepool, whoever else. So it is going to be a challenge, but I think it's a challenge that we are more than comfortable with. Is there anyone else that's in the key players section for us? No, just those two. So we're going to see how we get on. Now let's jump straight into the game against Benny Moore. You already know our lineup, but we'll have a look at theirs as well. All right, so we did mention it. The only real change for us that will come in is Connolly would usually start at right back. Everyone else is pretty much how we would want our first choice 11 to be. I've accidentally put Haygarth and York around the wrong way, so we'll switch them in a moment. But they've got a decent looking side as well. Playing a flat 4-4-2, they've got ex-Man United junior Max Taylor, who is a great player. And I think he has a great story. I think he's beaten cancer in the last few years, uh, which is fantastic to see. They've also got Harvey Neville, who I think is Phil's son, not Gary's. You can see he's played at Valencia, played at a couple other play clubs, including Man United in his youth career. Still only 21 years of age. He looks a solid option. Uh, Oliver Turton, 30-year-old ex-Crew Alexander Jr. He looks fantastic. Uh, so they've got some good players. And then Vasalo up front, I think he's one that we looked at previously, ex-Sheffield Wednesday. He's been at the club for a couple of seasons. Gillum will play alongside him on the 24. So still a relatively young side. Uh, still some strong players that they've picked up throughout the course of the last four seasons as the game's continued. We'll have to be at our best to beat them, but hopefully we can get off to a good start. Assertively, we're going to say we owe spending more after what happened in the last match. Must have been a cup game. I can't actually remember what that would have been. Got a highlight here. Lofts is going to start. We're going to let this play out, but I need to switch the two central midfielders. Neville, who we spoke about in the build-up, has the ball on the right-hand side. Goes back in midfield to Iqbal. Calvary out wide right to Neville. He skips fast. One challenge. No one's getting tight enough to him, and thankfully his strike is straight at Will Dennis in goal. All right, so first thing we're going to do is switch across these two midfielders. Get Max Haygarth at the Mazzara roll. Get Reese York back at the deep line playmaker. We are trying to keep an eye out for a deep line playmaker. There's a few players we wanted. Luke Cundall, I forgot to mention the players that left. Luke Cundall left. He's gone to a higher division side. I think it was Colchester. Um, so he's on full-time football now, which is like, it sucks that he's gone. It would have been great to keep him, um, but not too upset with him. Stainrod with a great opportunity there, just a long ball forward, very agricultural football. Forced a good save out of Lofts. And now we've got the resulting corner, Aris to take. Goes front post, Van hands it away. Goes to Turton at the top of the box and the highlight comes to an end. Ball up the line towards Stainrod. Van's gone through the back of him and he's already on a yellow card. They might be about to go down to 10 men here very early on in the game. They have indeed, and they've made one sub. They've sacrificed a forward. So we're playing against 10 men for about an hour now. We're going to use our get creative shout then. See if we can't turn the screws and get a goal before half time. Make them come out a little bit in the second half. All right, no further highlights, and they're actually shading it statistically. So five shots, three on target, 48% possession for Spennymore. Four shots, one on target, 52% for us. Let's go into the dressing room, and let's say, passionately, keep going. There are men down here so we can get a result. No one's responded particularly positively. We're also going to, I think, switch to our attacking mentality. Push on the two fullbacks, push on the two wingers, and let's just test it out. Let's see what this central midfielder on attack role actually looks like, and let's start the second half. 
We did go in for a couple of our club legends during the offseason. I was going to try and bring Sammy Omprion back on loan, but he's actually playing Ben Rama national football and starting every week. Um, but I'd love to get like a deep flying forward or someone to go along with that role. We've rocketed through to the hour mark. Sheriff with the throw in here. Gets a deep ball across. Stainrod's there. Hey, Garth, it falls to him and he gets the goal. His first goal of the season and opens our account for us at the higher level. A wonderful goal. And I wonder if that central midfield on attack role is going to see him pushing forward a little bit more than he does usually. You can see here Sheriff with the ball. Stainrod's there. It's a good header away, to be fair, by the spinning wall defense. But hey, Garth, on his favored left foot, smacks that one back across the keeper, who probably unsighted by his own defenders. Let's also go and make some subs here. Aris has a yellow card, so let's bring on Nathan Clements for his debut. And then Shade Morris is struggling a little bit. I'm more worried about the yellow card. Oh, actually, you know what? I trust Nigel Aris. Let's bring on Nathan Clements on the right. Carson's not having the best game. We may be bring on Ben Wells. And maybe we'll hold off on the last one for the last 10 minutes or so. Passionately tell them that they can make a difference. And let's also use our Get Creative Shout again, see if we can turn the screws. They've got a throw in here. Sheriff with the header away. Iqbal recovers at the top of the box. Hangs a ball back stick. Melbourne cuts it out well. Looks for a long ball forward towards Samuels. Good flick on header. Stainrod was there. Ball pinballs around in midfield. York recovers. Back to Haygarth. Wells now. Long ball forward towards Samuels. It has found its way behind and he bursts into the box and he finds the finish. Austin Samuels, first goal of the season. It was a lovely pass forward from Ben Wells. The defender might have just missed the header, but he did very well with the finish. Had to get into the box. Top of the area. Found the roof of the net. Yeah, I think the defender probably should have done better, but Samuels turns quite well, takes a touch, and then sends the keeper the wrong way just to dink it into the back of the net. And we go two goals to the good to start the season. All right, highlight here. Ball's with Melbourne. It's about 15 minutes remaining. We're going to hold off before we do our last sub. Ball in behind for Stainrod. Can he find the finish? He did quite well to get it back on his right foot, and then Lofts was equal to it. I wonder if we played two advance forwards, what that would look like. Samuels with the ball now. Tries to cut it back. Billum's going to recover and burst forward. The highlight continues. He hasn't got much on. We just need to stand him up. Samuels tackles and gives away a free kick in a dangerous area. He didn't need to. He wasn't going anywhere. All right, just because I'm curious about it, let's move Stainrod to the advanced forward role, which is his natural role. Let's take off Austin Samuels for Dong De Hee, who's a natural at the poaching role. Let's just see how that goes when two naturals play in their preferred positions. And let's use our demand more shout for the last 10 minutes or so. See if we can find some focus through to full time. Four minutes to be added on. We haven't seen a highlight in the last few minutes. And I dare say the referee's about to call full time. They have 12 shots, five on target, 48% of the ball for Spenny Moore. Most importantly, no goals scored and finished with 10 men. Uh, 15 shots for us, seven on target, 52% of the ball. And Max Haygarth and Austin Samuels, 61st and 66th minute, getting us the 2-0 victory. Passionately, let's say, really special. Nobody gave us a chance and you played magnificently. We do still have, despite being favourites in the league, we are still, I think, the lowest represent uh, lowest reputation team not represented team reputation team in the division so most games we're going to go into i think we won't be the favorites for quite some time does csgo third in the league there were only six teams that won the games outright in the first day of the season guysley farsley ultrancham morpeth and eversham and you can see some of the teams that were expected to do better like chester south shields whoever else They've only drawn their game, so it's definitely going to be more difficult this season than it potentially has been throughout the course of the year. Uh, Max Hagarth, 8.3 match rating, gets the Man of the Match award. Well done to him. Samuel scores on debut, which is fantastic. Assertively, you were superb in the number and chances created. We might also, just while we're here, go and do a little bit of a tactical tweak. First, we're going to switch these two around because that's not good enough. And we might also move this to be the central midfielder on attack. And we'll do that across each of our mentalities. Central midfielder on attack. He did score the goal from that position, so maybe we'll test it out and come back and see how it's gone in the next episode and do a little bit of a review on that positional change. Why not also go to two advanced forwards? Let's just see what that looks like. It's probably not going to work the way that I want it to, but hopefully we can come back after five or six games and see exactly how that's gone. As for the schedule, I think we'll come back and do maybe the game against Chester towards the end of September, which would be about seven or eight league games. I think this Stratford one is incorrectly there twice. So I think it's seven games through the division. Try and get through our 10 episodes this season. Chester, we know, are supposed to be a good side in this division. And then that frees us up to maybe skip October and come back for an episode in November. As always, guys, thank you for the continued support on the channel. Thank you for watching this episode. That's the part that means the most to me. If you want to subscribe to the channel and haven't already, please do so. It'll keep you up to date on all videos as they're released throughout the course of the year. Uh, if you look to the links over on that side, follow us on Twitter. Keep up with all our interactions with the FM community. 
keep an eye on the Twitch channel. We're doing regular Sunday night if you're in the UK Sunday morning streams. Um, hopefully we'll be able to expand those throughout the course of the year. I'm trying to find out what times work best, being that I'm in Australia and everyone else is everywhere else in the world. And of course, if you have any feedback, positive or negative, chuck it in the comment section below. I do try and write back to every comment that I get and it is me that sees them. More than anything though, thank you so much for watching. As always, I've been Sean and I'll see you all again in the mixer. Bye.